Greetings people, it's Paul back at Greenshire Homestead. We've got our turbine up and operating and uh, it was it was pretty simple to do. I, I did all the wiring and the assembly myself and it took about a day and a half. Um, I, I think it was a little easier for me because I was able to stand on the roof of my shop when I did you know, put everything together. Um, I had the tail feather, I, or the tail fin, I got that all put together and then I put the blades together on the hub and then I hauled everything up there individually. I set the, uh, the power unit on the pole. That's a two inch galvanized schedule 40 pipe. That's what you'll need to mount it. So I mounted the power head on there and then uh, I bolted the, uh, I hauled up the uh, tail fin and I bolted that on then I hauled up the, the uh, I ran the cable. The last thing I did was put the uh, blades on because you don't want the blades spinning while you're wiring up the cable. So I ran the cable and got that all wired up and then the very last thing I did was bolt on the, uh, the uh, blades. So that all worked out really well. The pole is only sticking out of the roof of the shop four feet. They do recommend it be higher than that, but um, we have a lot of island storms around here and uh, I didn't want it sticking up too high. I am going to do some lightning suppression and uh, an auto disconnect and all that kind of thing for, uh, for lightning protection, but uh, for right now, you know, this is August, we don't have any thunderstorms in August usually, that's mostly in the spring. So because the turbine is, the, the winds come from the west generally, which is where they're coming from right now, that turbine is, is overlooking a vast flood, flood, flood plain and we're sitting up on a hill here, so I figure sitting on a hill looking over a floodplain with no obstructions at all whatsoever, that pole is probably high enough. Uh, I, I think we're going to get some pretty good power out of it. This is August, and we nor norm normally don't even have breeze in August, and, and it's it's spinning currently. So it's not spinning enough that it's putting out any power, um, but it, it is spinning. So I'm going to go inside the shop and show you how I've mounted that inside the shop. Okay, um, you can see the pipe there running up that that beam, and uh, that. That is a uh, four by six main beam for the shop. It's you know set in the ground. It's obviously very sturdy, so I thought that'd be a good uh, place to uh, mount the pole. So I drilled a hole through the uh, roof there, a two inch hole, to allow the pipe to run through, and then I just put silicone there. That's all. That's the only way I, you know, just kept it real simple. So once I ran the pipe up through there. Um, I needed to have more than just the one pipe because, like I said, it went through the, the roof four feet, so it only left uh, six feet of pipe to bolt to the, uh, to the, the um, beam, and that wasn't going to be enough. So what I did was I got a, a one and a quarter inch pipe, and I, I fitted that into the two inch pipe, and you would think a one and a quarter would slide right in, but it's not. Uh, it, was, it was a real tight fit, and I had to manipulate the one and a quarter, and I'm going to show you how I did that. But once I had that one and a quarter, um, you can see the, the joint right about there um, where those two pipes come together. After I got that together, I just uh, bolted it to the, to the uh, beam and then uh, had to run the cable down through the pipe and along the wall, through the conduit underground and up to the house. That's, it, it, you know, it was that simple. So I'll show you how I fit that one and a quarter pipe into the two inch pipe. Now this is a section of that one and a quarter inch pipe that I had purchased, the 10 foot pipe. Uh, 10 foot was going to be a little too long, so I cut a couple feet off. And what I had to do to get this one and a quarter to fit into the two, two inch pipe was um, I took my skill saw with a diamond blade on it. Now the, the blade on that is going to be about a sixteenth of an inch wide. So I, I cut a slit in the pipe about a foot long, and then I came back and cut a second slit right next to it. So I had about a two sixteenth inch gap that I cut into the pipe and then was able to pinch it shut, just, just, that, just that little bit was enough to where I could start the pipe into the two inch pipe. And then I just got a sledgehammer and beat on the end. So I pounded the one and a quarter inch pipe into the two inch pipe about eight inches. And that gave a extremely strong and tight bond where um, I, was, I was much happier than I would have been had I bought you know, a, a coupler to thread onto the end of each pipe. That wouldn't have given me nearly, nearly the strength. So. Uh, I wanted to give you an idea on that if you were to do something similar to what I have That's how I did it, and it, it was it's a very strong bond and it worked really well So this is the pre-wired control panel that is provided by Missouri Wind and Solar to go along with this particular turbine It'll also work with the 2000 watt turbine 
Um, and the way that works, see I've got the 1600 watt turbine, so I've got three wires coming into this control panel. With the 2000 watt turbine, you'll have six wires coming into this control panel. So this is a dual brake switch, and this is a dual rectifier. So with my 1600 watt turbine, all I'm using is a single brake switch and a single rectifier. So basically, if, one, if I have a problem with one, now I've got another one. I can just move these three wires down here and use this other rectifier and brake switch. So that's kind of an, an added bonus to using the 1600 watt turbine. Um, also, we have the voltage reducer here. We have a midnight classic charge controller, and we have two breakers, and then we have the uh, cables, and these cables hook up to your battery um, bank. In my case, they're gonna, they bolted to the uh, bus bars and my EJ4 um, battery rack. This blue cable here, that's a, a temperature sensor for the batteries. I won't be using that because I have lithium. That's only if you have lead acid. So <clears throat> the um, cable comes from the turbine, bolts into the, into the brake switch, and then everything else is already pre-wired. The only thing, other thing I had to do was program the Classic. I was able to do most of that myself just because it's very similar to the Solar, but um, there was a few things with the wind that um, I needed some help with and I called Missouri Wind and Solar and talked with their tech support. They answered the phone right away and they walked me right through it. It, it, it. I just stood right here and they told me, go to this screen, that screen, and the other screen, and I got everything programmed up. It was really simple. Um, not a, I'm not an electrician. I have no electrical background other than DIY stuff at the house and I was able to do all this without any issues at all. So I have no, no information for you as to the amount of power this turbine is putting out because it's August and we're in the dog days of summer and we just don't have enough breeze. You saw the turbine was out there spinning at the time we were out there filming. Um, that was not enough to torque in that turbine to uh, produce any power here. Um, but I can tell you that uh, the current sharing is not a problem between I've got this solar arc that's hooked up to my solar array and I've got a charge verter that's hooked up to my generator down there on the floor. Both the solar arc, the charge verter, and the um, wind turbine are hooked up to the bus bars on this battery rack. The voltage that is being read by the solar arc and the classic are identical. There is no issue there between the two. There's no discrepancies. And I ran the charge verter after I got this all installed. I set the charge verter at 54 volts and 60 amps, and then I fire up my generator, and um, it then feeds my battery bank at 9.6 amps per battery, and it did that just fine uh, with all this hooked up. So uh, the tech support for Solar, EG4, and um, Missouri Wind and Solar, both all three of them said there shouldn't be any problem with current sharing on the bus bars, and there isn't any problem with current sharing on the bus bars. Now this hasn't put out power yet, but I, being as the charge controller is, is reading voltage properly and uh, we're, I'm not having any issues with any of the solar or the generator power coming in, um, screwing this up, I can't imagine where, where any problem would lie. So I think we're good to go. When the winter comes and we've got the wicked winds blowing through here and I start generating some power with this thing, I'm gonna put out some real world information for you on what this 1600 watt turbine will actually do in a real world scenario. Thanks for watching. We'll we'll get back with you later.